and um, you decided to stay in Koi. Yes, I liked it here. Um, uh, I like the pace of life. Um, kind of reminds me of a small town, but in a big city in a way. I don't know if that makes sense. But um, I like the people. Um, I love to hear the call to prayer every day. No, I'm not done. Um, even as a Muslim in the U.S., this you know you do you don't get to hear it. So I think you take it for granted when you know people who live here that they ha hear it you know every day. But it's one of the things that I love. Um, um, so I decided to stay, and I'm happy here. I like it here. Is it because you converted to Islam? You feel more safe. Uh, practicing your religion than going back to your mother no. country? No, not at all. How has this been reflected on your uh, family, on your friends, that you have chosen to be a Muslim? Well, my family, alhamdulillah, my families they're wonderful, really. They're really great. Um, my father had a difficult time when I started to wear the hijab, but um, I mean, he didn't stop loving me or anything like that, of course. But it was a, it was a, a difficult transition for him, and I think, it still is to some degree. But uh, he loves me, so he's, you know, he works to deal with it. But um, my sisters, my my brother, they're very supportive. As you know, for for my family, love and uh, support is a very big thing, and we give that to each other. So I'm very lucky for that. Um, if I'm happy, they're happy. When was your decision for wearing hijab? It was uh, recently, actually. It was in the last year. Um, uh, it's so funny. I don't know. It's, uh, I thought about it for a long time. Uh, my ex-husband never, never requested it. He, alhamdulillah, he always believed that it should come from my heart, and I appreciated that, and that was important to me as well and um, I woke up one day uh, well actually there were other things happening in my life and um, I started to work with the people that I'm working with now uh, in terms of actually it was uh, if you still remember it was um, me driving and Hussam with me yes. and suddenly it wasn't planned we thought of going having dinner because we had work to finish and at that time while we were coming to pick you up we were writing the nasheed the idea of the nasheed we did not have any idea that it would be you and from there Hussam asked you to say it in arabic Oh my God, I remember yes, now. Remember. Yes. And it was at that time so hard, and we stayed around <laughs> for five hours on the bed. I, just, I remember now. You know. So, was it hard saying it in the Arabic? It was really difficult. Um, I mean, it was easy to say, but I, it was difficult because um, my pronunciation is so terrible. And um, because it was something that was important to everyone involved. Uh, I was worried about my pronunciation, but I did my best. <laughs> and um, and um, why did you do it in Arabic? Why wasn't? Not to make the effort. Um, I could have sung it. I could have. We could have done it in English, but I wanted to make the effort to do it in in the Arabic language and. Um, I think, you know, the, not that we have any specific plans in terms of, you know, who would be hearing it. It, I, it just, but I think overall, I just wanted to make the effort to do it in Arabic. What was it? What was the name of this machine? Uh, just a doing bela Which is in English. Just a body without a soul. A body without a soul. No. Okay. You still remember the words? <laughs> Some of the words. I remember the words, but you won't have me sing them. Well, I want you to sing some of them. No, you won't. I'll say them, but you won't have me sing them. Okay.
في مره كنا طالعين انا والسيد عزيز صديقي طلعنا فكره كلمات عن جسد بلا روح وكنا مش عارفين لو وين نوصل بالنهايه الحمد لله انتجنا انشوده جسد بلا روح و... وانا كثير مبسوط اني تعرفت عليها و... و... وانجزنا الانشوده الاسلاميه وبتمنى لها كل خير جسد بلا روح وقلب به جرو ونفس تبكي تنور للذات تبور جسد بلا روح وقلب به جروح ونفس تبكي تنوح للذات تبوح تحتاج لوضوح ولله تروح